brothers and sisters in Christ, how many gifts are you going to give this Christmas? How many people are going to have a smile on their face because you went and picked out a gift for them, something that they would want or need or enjoy? How many people are going to unwrap something because you got it for them? Maybe I should also ask, how many thank yous do you think you're going to get this Christmas? How many times will somebody say thank you to you or write a thank you to you or maybe express their gratitude by something like a hug or some other sign of affection? I know that you and I don't give gifts in order to get thank yous. But how would you feel if year after year you gave gifts to someone and there never was any acknowledgement of it, they never said anything, they never acknowledged you gave them the gifts. In fact, instead of saying thank you, how would you feel if that person just simply nagged you for more gifts and asked simply, how do I really know that you love me? What would your response be to be to some, how, how, what? What would your response be to someone like that? How would you react to them? Through the prophet Malachi, God expresses how he felt. Those people of Israel that Malachi wrote to could look back on a long history of God showing his love for them. The book of Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament, by the time that Malachi was preaching to God's people, they could look back on all of the other books of prophecy and history that had been written, where God's promises to them as a nation had been recorded. They could look back at all the promises of the Savior in that Old Testament and see the record of God's love to them. Not only that, those Israelites Malachi preached to could look back at some facts of history. They could look back at the fact of how God had brought their nation out of slavery in Egypt and given them freedom. Those Israelites could look back on how God had delivered them and rescued them from enemy after enemy after enemy. They could see how God had brought them into that promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey where they enjoyed all kinds of physical blessings. In fact, by the time that Malachi preached to God's people, they could also look back on the reality of how God had not only brought them into that promised land one time, but how he had brought them back to that promised land after an exile in Babylon. And they could look at how God had so richly blessed them that they had been able to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. All evidences of God's love. And yet the response of those people of Malachi's day was to ask the question, How did you love us, Lord? What did you do for us? And in fact, they didn't just ask that question, but they actually lived out their ingratitude in the way that they acted. By the way that they lived, they showed that they were ungrateful for all the love that God had shown to them. As you and I listen to these words from Malachi, you and I too can look at a long history of God's love for us. We can look at all 66 books of the Bible, not just the Old Testament, but the New Testament as well, that God has given to us, and in fact given to us now in translation that we can understand. We can look at the history of God's love for us. And we can point to the facts of that love. The fact that in a few days we'll celebrate the birth of God's Son as our Savior. We can look at the fact of how that Son of God went to the cross to die for our sins and then rose again to give us eternal life. We can look at all of those wonderful truths that are the result of what Jesus did. How we have the forgiveness of sins that unburdens our consciences. We have the hope of eternal life that dries our tears when death touches us. 
We can look at all these evidences of God's love. And yet sometimes aren't we too tempted to wonder, does God really love me? When we face problems and difficulties, doesn't that question quickly come to our minds? Does God still really care about me? Has he forgotten me? We forget that long history of God's love. And not only when we face times of difficulty, but there are times in this life where the way that we live reflects ingratitude towards God for his love. And so as we listen to these words from Malachi chapter 1, See how they expose our own ingratitude. But also, but also remember that great love God has shown to us that stirs our gratitude in the first place. A lesson from Malachi chapter 1. The oracle of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you loved us? Is not, Jacob, is not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord? Yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated. I have laid waste his hill country and left his heritage to jackals of the desert. If Edom says, we are shattered, but we will rebuild the ruins, the Lord of hosts says, they may build, but I will tear down, and they will be called the wicked country, and the people with whom the Lord is angry forever. Your own eyes shall see this, and you shall say, Great is the Lord beyond the border of Israel. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I am a father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my fear, says the Lord of hosts, to you, O priests, who despise my name. But you say, how have we despised your name? By offering polluted food upon my altar. But you say, how have we polluted you? By saying that the Lord's table may be despised. When you offer blind animals in sacrifice, is that not evil? When you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not evil? Present that to your governor. Will he accept you or show you favor, says the Lord of hosts? And now entreat the favor of God that he may be gracious to us. With such a gift from your hand, will he show any favor to you, says the Lord of hosts? Oh, that there were, among, there, there were one among you who would shut the doors, that you may not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations. And in every place, incense will be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it when you say that the Lord's table is polluted, and its fruit, that is, its food, may be despised. But you say, what a weariness this is, and you snort at it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring what has been taken by violence, or is lame or sick, and this you bring as your offering. Shall I accept that from your hand, says the Lord? Cursed be the cheat who has a male in his flock and vows it, and yet sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue with hymn one. 